In this video, we'll be animating our top-down, eight-directional player character, Hermit Crab. We'll include idle and walking animations. I'm going to be starting with this top-down movement that I did in the previous video and this movement script. You can get this for free on my Patreon. First, we want to add in our animation and animator windows. Go to Window, Animation, and then click these two top ones. Then in our assets, we'll set up our folders. So we'll create a new one for sprites. For eight directional movement, you won't actually have to draw all eight sprites or use eight sprites. We just need these five and then we'll be flipping our character so that it makes the other side. I'm gonna drag these into our new sprites folder. And these are all our idle sprites. So I'll just create an idle folder and drag them in. Then I'll create another folder for walking and I'll drag in our walking sprites. Now we can set up our sprites. So if you select all your sprites and then in the inspector, we can set our pixels per unit to be whatever your sprite is, our filter mode to be point to no filter and compression to none and click apply. I'll do this again for our idle sprites. Now I'll create a new folder called animations. Inside this folder, I'll create another folder, one for idle and then one for walk. Going to click inside our idle folder and then select our player and then click create down in our animation window. In here, I'll name this down idle. So this will be when we're facing downwards or we press down on our keyboard. And then if you select the correct sprite, so I've got these two of our crab, drag them into the animation window. Now, because I've only dragged in these two frames, if I zoom in, you'll be able to see that it's kind of clipping and jumping back to the first frame really fast. To fix this, we take our first frame again and put it at the end past our second frame so that, you know, it plays the second frame for longer. <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense. So now you can see when I press play, it's nice and slow and we can see his idle animation. Now I'm going to go through and create the animations for each of the different directions. So we've got diagonal down idle. I'll do it slowly once more so you can see. We'll drag in our sprites, drag it out. Add our first frame again, check him, and he looks good. Cool, so now we've got our side idle, same deal. And our up diagonal idle, diagonal up idle, and our up idle. Now we'll do the same exact thing, but for our walking animation. So I have a few more sprites here, but it's the same thing. Um, you'd want to drag in your first one again just at the end after you drag in all your sprites to make sure that final frame doesn't get cut off. Cool, so now I'm gonna select our player and drag in a default sprite just so we can see what it looks like in our game scene. And when we press play, we can see him idling. And when we move around, he doesn't move yet. That's because in our script, we need to talk to our animator. If you click on the animator at the top, we can delete all of these default animation states because we're gonna make a blend tree. So right click, create state from new blend tree and name this idle. Double click to go inside. In blend type, change from 1D to 2D simple directional. Then add in eight motion fields. Inside these motion fields, we'll be dragging in our animations and then setting the positions. So down idle is zero to minus one. Down diagonal is minus one to minus one. And the rest, you can see on the screen, <laughs> I won't read them all out, um, but I just want to say how we're going to be reusing the ones that I said we were going to flip. So we only needed five that we needed to make, and then we'll reuse the diagonal up, diagonal down, and side idle. Now we need some parameters for the floats we'll pass in to know which direction we're facing. So we'll add two floats, the first one being last move X, and the next one being last move Y. Then we'll pass these into our parameters using the drop downs on our blend tree. Go back to our base layer, right click and do create state new blend tree, and we'll create one for walk. So this is going to be exactly the same thing as we just did, so I'm going to speed through it. You'll see I only have three walking animations, um, that's just because I'm lazy, and I'm going to reuse our idle ones for when we're looking straight up and diagonal up since you can't really tell, it's just a little crab. If you're also feeling lazy, I'm going to be posting this whole package for this animation with all these controllers and everything uh, on my Patreon, including our nice hermit crab sprite too. So here, we're adding two new parameters again. We want move X and move Y, and these will be the ones we use for this blend tree. 
So back in our base layer again, right click on idle and click make transition and then click on to walk. Click on this transition and we'll add a new float for this transition called move magnitude. Then on this transition, add a new condition and in the drop down select move magnitude greater than 0.1. Then untick has exit time. Now right click on walk, make transition and select our idle. Select this transition, add another condition, select move magnitude less than 0.1. So when we're not moving, we'll go back to idling. To make transitions faster under settings, you can change transition duration to zero for both idle and walk. Now back in our script, we'll pass in our parameters to our animator. So add a variable for animator, animator anim, and then a private vector two for last move direction, then a private ball being facing left equals true because our sprite is facing left. In our start function, call anim equals get component animator. Then in our update, we're gonna to want to do process inputs, animate and flip. So first off, let's make our process inputs. We'll move all of our functionality down here just so it's all tidy. Then we'll get our raw axes up above, one for X and one for Y. And we'll say if move X is equal to zero and move y is equal to zero and input dot x is not equal to zero or input dot y is not equal to zero which means we've stopped moving our last move direction will be our input grab process inputs put it up in our update so now next we'll do our animate function so we'll go void animate and we'll set our animator parameters. So anim.setFloat, move x will be our input.x. If you use control D, you can duplicate lines. So duplicate the line and do move y and input y. Then we'll want our magnitude. So move magnitude will be input.magnitude. Then we'll want our last move directions. So last move x will be last move direction x. Last move y will be last move direction y. And we're done. Let's put our animate function up in our update. And finally, we'll do our flip. So type void flip vector free scale equals transform dot local scale scale dot x times equals minus one. So basically we're making it negative, uh, which flips the sprite. Transform dot local scale equals scale and facing left equals not facing left. So we're flipping the ball, whether we've changed it from facing left to right or right to left. And we'll move our flip up the top and we wanna check if input X is less than zero and not facing left, or input X is greater than zero and is facing left, then we wanna flip. So now when we press play, we can see our hermit crab idling and idle being called and walk being called when we walk. If you click inside the walk blend tree, you can see all the nodes being selected. And we're finished. Didn't he look cute? Amazing. Like I said, this all will be on my Patreon if you're feeling lazy. Um, if not, Follow along. <laughs> See you later. Subscribe.